All right, what's going on? It's the Mad Hatter Show, of course, the Mad Hatter, the one and only Marcus Davis of The Breakfast Club is who we're talking to today. And a lot of people don't know Marcus' story. It's an extraordinary story. And the focus is really the leaps of faith that people take. Oftentimes, people have these big ideas of things that they want to do, things they want to try. And it stays right there on pen and pad of all the things they want to do and all the things they never try and they never go for. It. But you got that few five to ten percent that say, you know what? I'm putting it all on the line. I'm going to do it. And I think Marcus is one of those people in this incredible city of H-Town that's done exactly that. So for the people who don't know who Marcus Davis is, let's go back a little bit. Who's this guy? What side of town? What school? Yeah. Give me the, so the your whole, best friends when they see it, dog, he lied. He knew he went to this school. <laughs> now, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm born and raised in Houston, man. I'm Northeast Houston, uh, product of Fifth Ward, Texas. Fifth Ward. Straight out of the nickel. Mom and dad went to... Phyllis Wheatley, mm -hmm. the illustrious yes. Phyllis Wheatley High School. Definitely the nickel. Uh, then I, I went on to Cashman High School. Oh. And, and uh, you know, mom and my, my grandmother, grandfather, they lived in Cashman Garden, Center Garden. And uh, then I went on to Texas Tech. Yeah, I, I shifted from the north side to the south side. Did you know when you were going to school, did you already know what you wanted to do with your life? You know, You know, a along the way, there were times where, so my dad was a great cook, right? Mm -hmm. My dad was, he was a, he was an educator by profession, uh, but his two passions were music and food. Mm -hmm. He was a hell of a pianist and a hell of a cook. Mm -hmm. And I always knew my pops had something. And so I often thought about what would it be like to get his flavors in front of other folks. Because he was already doing that, right? Yeah, our, our house was the house where folks came over, <laughs> you know, oh, after, after church, you know, every, every Sunday somebody's mm -hmm. over to the house. The conversation immediately after services, before service ends, with Jerry Cook. Mm -hmm. And we decide, uh, you know, whose, whose house we were going to as a result of. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in addition to that, you know, Friday nights, Saturday nights, our place was just a place where people congregate. Did your family know that there was a cook in you? So, no, because <laughs> because because truthfully, brace yourself. <laughs> truthfully, there's not. <laughs> well, thanks, God. It has a restaurant. What do we, explain so, it? So, so here, here's the thing. Okay. Uh, I want to quote Jay Z right now, but I don't know if it'll be appropriate. Go ahead and do what I, you do. I, yeah. I, you know, I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. Right? <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not the business. I'm in the business of business. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, I'm in the business of business. Right? Yeah. I'm in the business of operations. So my strength is operations. I learned how to run restaurants. Okay. Um, from I would have never known that. Yeah. I thought you were a cook. Mm -hmm. No, my, my strength. My strength was restaurant operations. Okay. Uh, I just happened to have a gift from my father to know what good flavors look, taste, smell like. Mm -hmm. Right. So I can. I can identify. It. Um, but which is a and, skill, and 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 and, and, and yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I can go in the kitchen and make some stuff, you know? <laughs> but I, I I don't take the credit of being a chef uh, for those who are trained and professionals I and you. you know have a skill set. But my fascination has always been the operations of it. When did you know that you were going to try to do this? Because it was, I'm sure you went to school, oh, you probably did some other things. I'm, well, actually, that's yeah. the question. Did you do some other things before we got to the breakfast so, club? So, oh, man. I, 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 so you asked, when did I know? I've always had an interest in being in business. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where this came from, right? When I was a kid, my dad had me uh, doing the yard, doing the yard work, right? And my buddies you know, buddies playing hot ball right up the street, right? And I'm looking at them, they looking at me when I'm, you know, pulling weeds and planting flowers and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, man, I want to go play. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, you need to do this yard work. You need to learn how to do this work. Mm -hmm. I was like, why do I need to know how to do this work? He said, because when you get grown and you become a parent, and you have a house, you're gonna know how, have to know how to do the yard. Okay. And out of nowhere, I blurted out, I'm gonna be a businessman. I'm gonna be wealthy. And I'm gonna pay somebody to do it. <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. So after you got hit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. A after I picked myself up out of the grass. <laughs> I, know that, I know that those sequences happened just that way. <laughs> well, you know what? That one, he was a little bit more lean. Oh really? Right? Okay. He, he was a little bit more lean. I think because I took him, you know, off guard by letting him know that, you know, what my aspirations were, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
my dad was a jack of all trades. So he thought. <laughs> and I remember, and I know we sidetracked, but I remember, I know really, it, it, but I learned a lot as I reflected on these stories. So when people ask me, how did I get this? What did I cut? So I have to reflect on those yeah. things. I think it's always to reflect on where you came from, how you got, even the things that were intentional or unintentional, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this this can do spirit, I believe I got from my father, because he believed he could do anything he put his hands on. Yes. And uh, one day, spring break, I ran he said, uh, we're gonna put a new roof on the house. And we up there like, mm, you don't know how to put no roof on no house. Yeah. He was like, no, we're gonna do it. Me and my two brothers. So I'm walking down the sidewalk, I'm mumbling, I'm grumbling, I'm like, man, that's my spring break. <laughs> All I know is there was this tree and the house, in some way, somehow, I was wedged up in between that bad boy. <laughs> so yeah, that time. <laughs> but yeah, going back to, you know, being, 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 you know, I always knew that I wanted to get my, my father's flavors in, in, in front of folks. And so as I got older, it started to really sell in. When I started working in the food business at my first job, at, my first real job at 15 was in a fast food restaurant. And I just stayed the course doing that. That's all you ever did? No, no, no. I mean, what did you, when you went to college, what yeah. were you doing immediately? What, were you, what did you go to school for? So, my degree is in political science. I'm a political scientist. Oh, that's so, why you do all the political stuff right, that you so, always into in the city. Right. Because so, sometimes I think you're a congressman, then I got to remind myself, oh, no, he's a business owner. Okay. Because you do get your political on. Well, you know, there, there are a couple of things, right? One, yeah, my degree is in political science. You got to mention uh, your brother is also my brother uh, does political serve, figure. Serves so, as, so, as an elected official. Yes, he does. Um, but my interest in politics comes from one, my training in, in undergraduate, uh, but two, understand how the world works. And one of my mentors taught me a, a, a very valuable lesson. She said, uh, everything you do is a political statement from, you know, casting a vote to a flushing of a toilet. It's a political statement. And I was like, flushing the toilet? I like, get it. She said, you flush that toilet, that water is governed by a municipality, mm. right? How it's how it becomes fresh, how it's stored, how it's gotten rid of. Yeah. There's a government entity that manages. I get it. And then when you're in business, when you start writing checks to the federal government, <laughs> to the United States Treasury, yeah. the next time you see on television hundreds of millions of dollars in tax dollars, mm -hmm. you understand where that, where that money comes from. I got you. You know what I mean? When the money comes out of our paycheck, which is the greatest trick America ever played on the, the American <laughs> citizens, when the money comes out of your paycheck before you get it, mm -hmm. you don't think about it. Uh, but when you have to turn around and write, literally write your Uncle Sam a check, check. life changes <laughs> tremendously. <laughs> so you go to school, walk me through where you were getting ready to go at that point. <clears throat> because something has to happen before you get to breakfast club. Yeah, the breakfast club. <laughs> TVK. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. That's yeah. Right. So, um, man, I went to a, so I'm working in fast food. I work, one of the unknown secrets about me, cats didn't know this, and I remember when they found out, but I, I secretly worked in a fast food restaurant through our college, slanging burgers and fries. So why'd you keep it a secret? Well, I mean, a secret, it just wasn't something people mm -hmm. knew, okay. knew, right? Um, until until I got and one, it wasn't cool. I mean, I'm just fly guy on campus, right? <laughs> I'm dapper dad. And so, uh, you know, it wasn't until I started getting on the management track. And so that's when I started talking about what I was going to do, which was work in the company and move on up. And when I graduated from college, my goal was to go and work. Okay. For that company. Okay. Um, but <clears throat> what happened one day, um, I'm sitting down. A friend of mine had a had a had a small business, and she brought in a guy to do staff development, mm -hmm. right? And he was, I guess, what we call a motivation speaker or something of that nature, whatever term. But he came in to to talk to the staff, and she asked me, "What did, it, did I want to come?" And I said, "Yeah, I come. Check it out." And it was. Um, it was it was monumental. I mean, he asked a very simple question. You know, what is it that you love doing, and what is it that you're really great at doing? And I was like, I already know. And so it just kind of, I, I knew before, but it was, you know, I would timidly move towards it. 
but just making me think about what I was good at and what I was passionate about, which was creating spaces where people would enjoy themselves, whether it was at my house, which is what I did a lot, a lot of entertaining, whether it was throwing parties, you know, frat parties on campus or what have you, just, you know, a number of things that, that you, you, you engage in. Sorry, I did not know you were in the frat. Oh, just throwing parties, I just say okay. just throwing parties. <laughs> <laughs> but just this idea of creating spaces mm-hmm. where people came to, to, to enjoy themselves, to fellowship, to have a great time. So when did this idea start hitting you like, I got to do this? So when did this idea hit me? So that's a good question. Because did somebody put it in your head? Did somebody say you should do this? What well, Something has to happen before we get here. You, you know, you, this, is what, this is what this whole thing is all about, yeah. taking leaps of faith. Because yeah. oftentimes you can... You, you took all the necessary steps. You had interest, you did this, you did that, you started learning about it from fast food. Right. But there is a big difference between the guy who is getting all this knowledge, yeah. acquiring all the knowledge, and then applying the knowledge right. and doing something about it, and then being successful and winning. Because yeah. let's be honest, and we talked about this before in the past, that you can have a restaurant, but the truth of the matter is, most restaurants fail. There are a lot of them. A lot of so you have to fail. know when you go into this, that the, the risk, the, ch- the chances of you failing, unfortunately, yeah, is not on your side. The chance of failing is on your side, actually. The chances of you winning and being successful yeah. is not. And now, here you are, years later, not only are you here, but right. you're also in some airports. We are, we are in some airports. <laughs> We're so, what made you take this leap of faith? Did something happen? Did somebody make you mad? Did somebody encourage you? Were you in church one Sunday? That's what I want to know. What made what so, finally pushed you off the ledge? Yeah. Because here's the thing: when you get pushed off the ledge, yeah. right? There's no safety net, my friend. No, what's I don't up? care if a family member is supplying you with the cash. Because if a family member supplies you with the cash to start, you can lose all their money. So there is no such thing as a safety net when you take the leap of faith. Right. So. What inspired you? What gave you the audacity? What made your ego so large, an ego in a positive way, so mighty no, I'm, I'm that you said I'm going to do this? I'm with you. So let me let me let me answer that. I want to I want to go back to. I want to put a pin in the word audacity because I like that, right? Okay. <laughs> but I want to something you said before. I want to make sure it, you know it's clear. This is not my first rodeo, right? Oh, okay. This is not my first try at being an entrepreneur. It's my first restaurant venture okay but it's not my first try at being an entrepreneur okay so right yeah, okay see what i'm saying yes so me being an entrepreneur going back to the kid that was doing the garden right i always knew i wanted to do something i just didn't know what it was so there were a number of things that i tried you know mm-hmm. i tried in there doing um uh used cars you know buying didn't and selling know. cars didn't know. Uh, i found this building uh flipping real estate looking for lots to buy and sell so originally you were thinking about selling cars here? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just giving you a range of things that, that you were doing. That I was so doing. why you found this. At, 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 you know, in my entrepreneurial effort, uh-huh. right? So just to point out that the entrepreneur was in me. Mm-hmm. The leaps of faith had had occurred on a number of different times, mm-hmm. right? I, t- I tell you one, like uh, when championship time came around and folks start making jokes on social media about. Uh, Oh Lord, here come the T-shirt guys. <laughs> you know, talking about guys hustling the T-shirts. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, so I just went online and I posted. I said, "Hey guys, be careful how you interact or treat or how you think of the T-shirt guy, because one day he may hit that lick and go on to be the CEO of a multi-million dollar company." That's right. Because I used to hustle T-shirts. That's right. That was one of my entrepreneurial ventures in '95, '96 when the Rockets won the championship. A buddy of mine and I created a shirt, and I'm walking up and down Richmond Avenue with shirts on my back, hot off the printing press, trying to sell Rockets shirt. You know, so that entrepreneurial thing had already, you know, had been there for a while. Mm-hmm. Now, when you ask the question of, of, you know, what gave you the the belief, the faith, the audacity to, to do this? The way I see it, and the phrase that I that I like to share with myself and with other folks is, "How dare you? Right? Mm. How dare you not? Mm. Right? Mm. We think that oh man, this is an eighty percent failure rate. What the hell do you think you're doing over here? When you think about the gift, the talent, the skill that you've been given, 
the vision that has been given to you from the creator, from the universe, and the provision that's available to you out if you if you activate that faith. Who in the hell are you to deny the creator the opportunity to show what can be done through your hands? So for me, it's not a it's not a question of, you know, what made you think you could do this? What in the hell makes you think that you can't do this? And you walked into the situation that boldly with that thought? Were you and at any time were you saying to yourself, I could fail? Or were you always saying to yourself, wait until I win? And I quit my job to do this. Right. Right? I literally, I told you I was looking in the newspaper, I was looking for different op investment opportunities on my on my lunch break. My boy Jamal King just talked about in your when you're in the hole, because he's a real estate guy that came up doing um, real estate on his break time, right, while he's a police officer. And so, you know, I, I hit him up. I was like, I get it. Because I was on the lunch break, sitting in the, in the teacher's lounge, flipping through the paper, looking for real estate opportunities when I came across this location for a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I put the real estate stuff aside because restaurant was my passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and when you ask what was that thing that happened, Getting fired ain't fun. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you even know, after you get fired, yeah. there's, there's still an audacity to be saying, I don't care, I, here's I, where I'm so going. So I'll I, I tell you what. I work for a major corporation, hundreds of millions of dollars. I ran a number of stores for them. I ran stores that did millions of dollars. I took stores that had lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I was a troubleshooter. And I was sent in and I made those stores profitable. Mm. And so the that audacity came through me being very aware of my skill set. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. And so I had a buddy of mine that was came through the same program that I was in, and he knew which job I was applying for with the company. And he was like, Man, how dare you think that you qualify for that? I said, Do you know the last store I made? I took had lost two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I made them a profit of a dollar. I just made this company two hundred fifty one thousand dollars. You think I don't deserve to get what is down the road for me? So that it, 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 you could say it's a little bit of arrogance. You could say it's a little bit of ego. But I was keenly aware of what I had to really do. And when and when you get locked in and in tune, as 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 Cat Williams say, with your star player, you know when you know what you have the capability of doing. Yeah. Uh, man, that I mean that that's life change. You know, the guy that takes the the, the the game winning shot takes it because he knows he can make it. It's not a, it's not about whether I miss or not. He knows it is within my ability to make this shot. Especially if he's made it once before or twice before or what have you. When you open the door yeah. for the first time and this place is empty, of course mm. none of these people are here. No, they want they By the way, my apologies for coming here. I see that thing <laughs> got busy. People probably scared to sit down. That's like, all no, good. my apologies. That's all but good. The first day you open the door to the Breakfast Club. Right. In your head, what were, what were the first thoughts going through your mind when you know you open the door? Because it's hard. Yeah. To visualize, like I could not have visualized paintings on the wall, the people oh. sitting down eating your food, looking happy right now. Yes, I was yeah, not yeah. able to visual. I would not be able to visualize that. Yes, you can. And and I and, I, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how I know. The conversation you and I had offline before we came on. Yes, you painted a perfect picture of something that you're working on. I didn't see it as clearly as you saw it, but I saw it. I got you. And I was completely confident that you saw. And I talk a lot about vision. When you, when, I mean, vision is one of my, I got five points that I share with aspiring entrepreneurs or people that just want to live life freely. One is see it and see it crystal clear. I'm asked on a regular basis, did you ever think this would happen? It's Saturday morning, the line's out the door around yeah. the corner, up the street. I see it's, the line right it's, now. It's, it's, yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> it's high noon and people will come over. lady called me over to the table and she said, did you ever think this would happen? And my answer to her was yes. And the first time I did that, somebody looked at me and it was like, it's and they didn't, they weren't expecting me to, to say yes. And I think, you know, said, don't you think that's real? I said, for me to deny that is to me, is for me to deny the concept and the principle of vision and faith. Right? So if, if, if when you deny those things, then you're, you're denying, and I'm not even talking about, you know, religiously, but spiritually, right. 
when you deny the ability to see those things and the ability to make those things come to fruition, then you are denying an age-old principle that exists on this earth, which is vision and faith. I mean, even, you know, the good books talk about faith. Without vision, people perish. Mark and David, The Breakfast Club. This is where and we faith are. without works is dead. When did you know <laughs> that you had become successful in your business of The Breakfast Club? Because so, there's, a, there's a day where you're like, we doing it. Yeah. So I, I, I have a couple of those, right? Um, so one is the first day that we actually got hit, right? We got a, we got a rush. Okay. You know, that was a certain period of time where we only had X amount of customers coming in a day. And we counted on those customers come I mean literally there were five or six groups of folks that we would bank on seeing during that week right and if we didn't see them we knew the light bill was in trouble right um, and it was refreshing when you see them pull up and like got rent paid got light bill paid you know as a matter of fact I tell you who one of those cats was Slim the Slim was wow. huge Slim and his crew showed up here regularly during the week. And when we didn't see him, we were like, man, what? I ain't seen Slim. See no? Bodney boys. Bodney boy, all the time. I mean, they were like regulars, man. And, 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 and they were part of the early core of TBK. That's cool. It, it, it's it's cool. Man, man it's dope as hell. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and they were, they were super hot. They were. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it was just refreshing. So going back to when did we, when did it hit? You know, one day instead of waiting for these little spurts, one day we just I've been out in the streets grinding. I've been I had a routine. I'd go out in the morning to the corner and dart in between traffic and pass out flyers. Then after the flyer time was over, I come back in at about nine and I go grab muffins and I would get two or three bags of muffins and grab some menus and I'd start hitting the businesses up in the area, just going in and introduce myself. This is the pre-IG world, baby. This, we, we ain't got Instagram, we ain't got Facebook. We don't have none of that. Yeah. We're, we're, no text message, no mass email was the best that you had, right? But you know, and back then you remember the strength of of of, of any uh event was how good your street game was. That's all I knew was freaking them out. <laughs> you know, getting that, no, putting that, putting your putting feet to the paper, yeah. putting that footwork yeah. in. Yeah. You know, like and slanging so, records. Right. Exactly. And so, you know, I'm, but I'm slanging muffins. They start calling me the muffin man because I was, I was hitting, I'd, I'd stop by, hey, just said you do it. You know, I would have to hit a business three or four times before they would actually come and cross out. They start relying on the muffins. I say, hey, bring you no more muffins till you come down to the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I, walk, guy, I, I, walked in, I walked in one day and he's like, what a month is? I said, I ain't bring no month. You got to come get them. That's right. You know? So, you know, one day after being out in the street hustling and coming back inside and, you know, one customer, two customers, three customers, and I'm standing at that window with my back to the window, I mean, with my back to the audience, and, like, all of a sudden, I could just, I zoned out, right? I could hear literally everything that was happening yeah right i could hear every fork touch the plate i could hear individual conversations i could hear the ice machine it was like you know one of those matrix moments and i turned around and i looked and I was, Whoa. we busy <laughs> it's, happening. it's happening and so that was that was one of the moments when did i know that we had become successful I just shared this with you. And I love sharing these types of stories. Because, you know, sometimes people think it's when this person came or when that person came. Mm -hmm. For me, we're close to the MD Anderson hospital. And there was a couple that used to come in here on a regular basis. And it took me a couple of weeks to figure out what, what, what was going on. They were traveling here for a team at MD Anderson. And so one day, He's down there, 
getting her, getting his treatment. And she's sitting over here in the window with a cup of coffee, just gazing out. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, this woman is going through the most tumultuous time probably in her life, in her marriage. And her place of refuge, her place of solace, her place of comfort, this is where she chose to come. And I was like, now we have an impact. That's when I felt like we were. Okay, well, it's really hard to top that. <laughs> oh, but this is, so you are I a mean, sister. don't I get mean, me wrong. I mean, <laughs> there was, the, it was cool emotion. when, you know, Serena came in and it was cool. Go on, name drop. When, go on, name drop. When Magic came in, I mean, that just, you know, and Ron DMC. Keep going, keep going now. And, you know, it was cool when those guys came in, when Common showed up. Keep all, going. You know, when the NBA All-Star was in. All, it was cool. <laughs> but here's the reality, man. And this is a lesson I try and share with business owners. Though we call those folks celebrities, right? Who? Celebrities. Celebrities, yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And people used to ask me, you got to think about this, in 2001, 2002, 2003, before you could post on Facebook or on Instagram, you know what the common thing to do was, right? Snap a picture and you hang it on the wall of who's been here. Yeah. And that was something we opted not to do. Because? Because I didn't want to. I did not realize that. Yeah, we never we never did that. We never did that. Sure have. Well, I, I never wanted to celebrate that person as the celebrity. Because the true celebrity in my mind was a guy named Mark who ate here five days a week sitting in that window. <laughs> yes, That sir. was the real celebrity. Yes, sir. The real celebrity was one of the mailmen in the area who made this his breakfast spot three, four times a week. Yes, sir. The people that help us carry out our livelihood, those were the real celebrities. The couple that, that the, the group of guys that eat here, that's been eating here for 14 years every Wednesday morning like clockwork. You know, the family that comes and sits up top every other Friday, those are the real celebrities. Mm. You know, Although it's got to be nice to have the celebrity think or say that your spot is the spot they got to go oh, to. I mean, of course. As soon as they get off the plane, if it's in the morning, yeah. before they get to their hotel, oh, yeah. this is where they go to. Well, I'm going to tell you why that's nice. Not because they did it or because they said it. The reason it's nice is because that was a goal. From the get-go, from the jump, from day one. Drawing up my business plan. One of my objectives was to be synonymous with the city of Houston. Mm. I wanted people, when you mention Houston, you got to say you gotta say the breakfast club. Yes, sir. I wanted you to check into a hotel, which literally happened. My buddy checked into a hotel in Atlanta. He was like, he called me. He was like, man, I'm in I just took, she saw us from Houston. And guess the first thing she asked me? You been to the breakfast club? Yep. That was a goal. That seems common today. Right? That scene, that, that, that scene. Every, every celebrity that comes to the city, that's the first thing they want you to do, is take them to the breakfast club. And they want you because to it's, a celebrity, it's a celebrity restaurant. Right. That's not right. the, the sauce you up. No, no, no. That's just the truth. Oh, I, I, I know, get it. This is one of the first things yeah. people out of this city, you go to any city in this country, any right. celebrity, they either tell you a story about coming to the breakfast club right. or I heard about the breakfast club. Right. That has to be an incredible feeling knowing that the first thing they want to do they ain't thinking about the concert that night right all the things they want to do all the clubs they want to go to yeah. they thinking about this one food place which i understand food is a very uh communal thing with it people is. and it i is. get that i understand that but it has to be kind of cool to know that people all across the country the first thing they want to do when they come to this city every time they used to come up to, to the station and want to do an interview as soon as they done hey man breakfast club right how far is it from here right that has to be a cool feeling. It, it is. But I, again, I, the reason that it's cool is because that was a goal. <laughs> yes, sir. That was what we set out to do. We wanted to be known. How do you do that? Because everybody can't do it. Let's Come on, man. Let's be honest. Every, what, what, every, you, what you've accomplished. Yeah. Okay, this is my moment to tell you. Everyone can't do what you've just accomplished. Everyone doesn't have a line outside. Only a few places right. since I've lived in this city right. for many, 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 many years have been able to accomplish this for this long of a period. There have been some bad <laughs> no. No, no, there and I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Of some people right. that they got the hot spot right. today. Right. But the spot, and this from clubs to yeah. restaurants to right. different businesses. Right. I'm talking about everybody. It's hard to have a company, a business, where it's the place to go for years. There's that, a line out the door there's a for years. years. There's a difference in success, which is great, but there's a difference in success and sustained success. Yes. Right? Uh, success is hard. But it's not hard, relatively speaking, right? 
I believe if you want to do something and you try to do it, whether it lasts for three hours or 30 days or three months, you were successful in doing that thing. Okay. Right? Yeah. Now, getting accolades is a little bit hard. Being recognized is a little hard. But to be able to do that for almost two decades. Yeah. It's to be commended. It's yeah. to be commended. And you know what I always loved about the place? This, somebody might get mad at me. I don't know. I love because of the diversity. And I don't know if that was a goal. But you see, like right now sitting across from me. Yeah. There's a table with a white with a white man, an Asian woman, right. and a black man. And I'm not sure what the woman is there. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? No, There's I'm diversity you. in this entire place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So see, that that's hard to accomplish with because usually if you say, I have a restaurant and I'm a black guy, yeah. all the homies, all the black right. people are gonna only come to me. But to be able to have a, a, a especially a food place right. and there's so much diversity. And I don't, even, I don't even know if you can plan that. So, did I plan it? Yes. You oh, also, you, how do you plan diversity? Look, there's a common question in business. When you're drawing up your business plan, when you're going to look for funding, the question on your business plan or from the funders is, who is your target audience? Mm. And I frustrated a lot of bankers, <laughs> and probably why none of them gave me any money, <laughs> because I would not identify a target audience. I was adamant that we don't have a target audience. I said, the Breakfast Club is gonna be a place for everybody. Anybody and everybody that wants to participate, we wanna open our doors to them. And our goal was to have that type of diversity. Yes, I, yes we're a black owned business, yes. right? And yes, I knew a good portion of our customers would be African American. And I celebrate that, and I'm grateful for my community support us to this point. But I also wanted, as an African American in business, in entrepreneurship, there are barriers that I want to do my part to break through. Yes, because of the years of oppression that we've experienced, right? And because of the limited exposure that we, we've had, We've been reduced to thinking that beyond running fast and kicking a ball and shooting, that we don't that we lack the ability to create a product for the general marketplace. Right? This this is this is my you know, so I don't want nobody, you know, saying I'm wrong. This is this was what I came to understand. Yes, sir. Is that we were limited to only believing that we because every time I show somebody the business plan. Folks, the first thing they would say, man, you really think you can get black people? I was like, man, this is a city of three million people with blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians. It's a bunch of people in this city. Yes, sir. I understood what they were asking, but this notion of we only have the ability to create a product good for just them, just for, and we don't have the ability to create a product for the general market. And we're way more talented than that. Yes, sir. When we, those few black history lessons that we did get in school, mm -hmm. Those inventors invented for the general marketplace. When we talk about the brother that invited, invented the stoplight, that wasn't just for black folks. That was for the general marketplace. Yes, sir. When we talked about Dr. Carver, that wasn't for, that was for the general. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? Right. There are a number of you know the heart surgery, every all those you know we we only learned ten black history lessons, yeah, yeah. right? And Charles Drew, right, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, right. Dr. So, Carver, <laughs> th those were products that were for the general marketplace. Yes. We've been socialized to believe that our skill set is limited to producing a product for us, right? With that. And so, you know, I, I, I wanted to do my part to, 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 to break through that. You did that, you achieved that. And, I'm, and I'm, remember I'm what I told you. you too much. Appreciate it, brother. Remember what I, I told you. Because I remember you started this, and so this is awesome. <laughs> no, I do, I do. No, I, I, when there was nothing in here, yeah. I remember. And going back to, you know, the city of Houston, remember I, I, I wanted to be, to be synonymous with the city. I can't be synonymous with the city if we don't look like the city, right? Mm. Houston's one of the most diverse cities in the nation. You're right about that, you're right, you're right. What, uh, what's, what's, what's the market's keys to success? I know oh, kids probably ask, that's one of the probably the man, what's the keys to success so I can just do exactly what you just did, <laughs> give me them three keys so I can start to duplicate it tomorrow yeah. and be as successful as you. Look, I. I can't tell folks that this is the, the answer. What I can only tell folks is what I've 
the mantra and the philosophy that I've lived by. Give me that. And this is applicable beyond food. This is whatever product or service somebody's offering. Quality product, quality service, all the time. If you deliver a great product, you deliver it to great people, and you're very consistent with that, then there's a great opportunity for success. So, I, you know, I, I had a young lady who wrote on her Facebook page the other day. She hadn't. She, she was a. She was an early adapter. She used to come in the first two or three years all the time. Then over time, she took ill and. But she came back to the restaurant like about three months ago and wrote on her page those oh, same grits from 15 years ago. Right? Consistency is, is, is key. Not being afraid to deliver. When I say quality product, I'll give you a, a typical example of, of some things that uh, you know some business folks may do. I'm selling this product and somebody walks in the door and says, hey man, which happens all the time. People come in all the time and they want to sell me. Hey man, I, I, I can get you fish, fish cheaper than that. Right? I can get you... You know, the eggs cheaper than all. You know, all kind of options. Mm -hmm. And what I would tell them is that I have a product that is great right now. Either you find a way to get me this great product at a reduced price, or you buy me a better product, and then we can talk. But me just changing products just for the sake of changing, just because you can give me thirty cents off a dollar, makes no sense. I'm not. I'm not interested. Let me ask you this too, much. I know I'm asking questions. No, I get it. How do even, even in this great endeavor, there will be distractors. There will be those who are angry about your success. Uh, they feel responsible for your success. It's just, no matter what you do, there's gonna be a certain amount of animosity and hate because of your success. How do you rest at night knowing that, you know, there's some people unhappy because you have been successful. They still wait for you to fail, by the way. How many years has it been now that this is it? Been Eight, 18 years. There's one guy, he is still 18 years deep. <laughs> I'm waiting for this to fall apart so he can say, ah, I, told you. I knew it wasn't going to last, though. Look here. See, the first year was you couldn't do it. I'm, Second year, you couldn't do it. 10 years deep, like, lucky. <laughs> 18 yeah. years, he's like, ain't going to last much longer. Y'all yeah. see what's happening with, with economics now and what's going on in the, in the world? He's still waiting, or she's still waiting. How do we deal with that? Because you know that's the truth. So, so one one thing I I, I have to you know, those of you out there still waiting for us to fail, you must not understand how I'm built. Right? After 18 years of, of, of forging forward, if you waiting for us to fail, you must not understand how I'm built. I, it's just that simple. Because I'm I'm not wired like that. I'm not saying that. Anything can't happen, but I'm not wired to quit. <laughs> I ain't wired to give up. I ain't wired. Look, even what we're going You're really hurting that person's feeling right now. He, he, He's he really not, looking for they, a moment they, of weakness. They don't understand my DNA. Mm. Even right now, right? And this is, this is we're in a very trying time, right? Yes, we are. But as an entrepreneur, I had to go into my closet and, and dig deep on what does this mean? This means you need to find a way to be a better entrepreneur. Okay. And, and that's just the reality of it. You know, you, throughout my 18 years in business, I've been tested, been tried. It's going to happen in the world of business. And you got to find a way to, to be better. And so I don't know what the answer is, <laughs> but I know on the other side of this, <laughs> I'm going to be a I'm gonna be a better entrepreneur than I was before this. Well, let me let me ask you this, because I'm gonna leave you alone, because I know I see you got business. Yeah. You go shake people's hands and kiss babies and do what you do. I did but, I ask you a question? Yes, you did. Okay. I, I just want to know how oh, you no. handled that. Hey, yeah, I just so, want to know how you handled so, because it's out there. Well, and so let me let me put let me put and it basically you just said I don't need yeah. to pay no attention to it. I got better things to do. I right. think people saw what you so, understood what you said. I, I have come to understand as best I can, for the most part, to understand where part of that hatred is, is derived from. Okay. So I don't I don't I don't harbor anger towards that towards that. So part of part of part of that hatred is really a frustration of other folks not living out their dream. You, you understand what I'm saying? So my re, my response okay. to that is I try and free as many people as I can by encouraging and inspiring them to live out their dream. If they dig down deep enough, part of why they have that in their heart 
is because there it, it's when somebody wins, when the person we're cheering for wins, we cheer with them. Why? Right. Because we're living vicariously through them, right? So when somebody wins that we don't want them to win, we're not living vicariously through them. We're resisting their success because we haven't gotten what they've got. So we have two options when we see somebody successful. We can live vicariously through them or we can harbor ill will because we ain't done the shit that we wanted to do. <laughs> Okay. Right? And so, you know, my, my response to that is try and deliver them a message of, of, of hope and inspiration. All right. Now, last, lastly, because hate, this hate thing is big for me. Okay. Lastly. Me too. I got songs about it. La, la, <laughs> lastly. And, and I, I, I share this when I go and speak to, to aspiring entrepreneurs, right? Because a lot of times we, we throw that word hater around, right? And we like to use it as a reason why we did not do well or why something ain't going our way. We'll say because they hating on us. One, that vision, that goal, that dream that was given to you, that's not the responsibility of anybody else. So it not happening don't have nothing to do with them. It belongs to you and you alone. It ain't because your mama didn't give you the money, your daddy didn't give you money, your brother didn't come work with you, your yeah. best friend didn't. That ain't the reason why it didn't happen. Yeah. They're not responsible for that. Yeah. Yeah. The only person responsible for that is Y-O-U. Lastly, the vision that the creator gave to you, he only gave it to you. Everybody has their own picture that was painted perfectly for them. And they have the responsibility of bringing that into fruition, into the earth. That's their job. That's their goal. Part of what I learned the wise of their goal is for the people who can't see it. The people that we say, hey, they're just blind. They're not, they're not. <laughs> and you're there to be the eye doctor. I got you. I got you. Finally. I would have said the opto the, but I forgot which one it was. Optometrist. Ophthalmologist. <laughs> not the one baby doctor. The one. <laughs> All right. And finally. So what's and the person that is, you know, want to wait to see you fail, let's remind him or her or them that you have grown and you continue to grow. Yes, you are at the airport. What's the next move for you? Because once you are successful, the thing about successful people I realize, they just don't, generally, they don't get comfortable in their success and stay right there, right? Especially a guy like you. After they do this and they look around and say, lies out the door, yeah. people look happy, food's, food, food's good, now what can I do? So, so I know you're gonna. I know I, there has to be more. I, I, and I, I give, I give it to you. And it's not based on this. I got to do the next thing, but it's based on my definition of entrepreneurship, which is filling a void in the marketplace that the marketplace is calling for consciously or sub subconscious. Okay. Entrepreneurs are responsible for bringing into existence that which does not exist because the people want it, because the people need it, or the people can benefit from it. And so the next thing for me, typically is a result of what is it that the people are looking for? What is it that the people are asking for? What is it that the people are yearning for? So it's not, it's not necessarily dictated by, man, I want to open 20 stores, but it's more catered towards where is the void in the marketplace that needs to be filled? And for me, being an African American in, in business and the hospitality business, that void is the hospitality company that does not exist. So when I want to figure out how to grow my company, there are limited uh, examples that look like me. So my goal is to be a source of inspiration for the next cat that says, man, I wanna open a house of talent. Let me see who's done it. And that's not to say that they can't look to someone with a different view. Yes, sir. But familiarity is a beast. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So that's what's next. Well, good luck, sir. Good luck to you. And by the way, can you tell everybody, everybody thinks that you're just the Breakfast Club, yeah. but being the entrepreneur that you are, right. You have a lot of uh, real estate, so to speak, when it comes to this. Yeah. Can so, you, all the stuff you the, the Breakfast Club is our flagship. Yes, sir. 
Uh, then we have the Reggae Hut, which is a Caribbean restaurant over. And uh, some people don't notice that you yeah. have all these spots. Yeah, the Reggae Hut. Uh, then we have the Alley Cat Bar and Lounge, and then we have Culture, which is uh, an upscale Southern cuisine in downtown Houston. And then we have our uh, airport locations: Terminal A and, and Intercontinental, A North, A South. All right. And more to come. <laughs> food trucks on the way. Are you going to do food trucks? Yeah, that's how most of the media events. We're, we're having a food truck built out okay, right now. Actually, so yeah. where, where are you spending all your time at? Yeah. Because this is hot, because you're you're one person. And, <laughs> I mean, for real, this is a big company. I yeah. mean, I know you, you, no, you I feel get like it. a mom and pop. Yeah. But this is a mom and pop with a lot of, I call right. it real estate. Right. How are you able to divvy your time? Okay, I got to spend some time over here. I got to go over here. Now you're talking about doing trucks. You're already in the airports. Right. Probably trying to get another airport too. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I just know you're an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs do what right. entrepreneurs do. Right. How do you figure out where you're going to be to do what you do? Two things. And it's funny you ask that because uh, on Mondays I put out a minute with Marcus. And that's what the one talks about today, which is establishing a culture, right? And our culture here is, you know, the pursuit of excellence. And then surrounding yourself with great people that buy into and believe in helping build and promote their culture. So That's I've a lot it. of power to give to those people, huh? Because this yeah. is some this is a vision that you have in your head and what you're saying to yourself. But I believe that this person that I put over this over there will handle it much like the way I would handle that situation if I was over there. Right. That's a lot of power to give somebody with your dream. Well, part of it has to do with, one, solidifying the culture that you built. My, my GM and assistant director of operations clearly understands what we stand for and is clearly committed to adhering to that and to promoting. Good luck, brother. I, you know, I'm talking to you, and I'm, I'm, when I came here, I'm thinking The Breakfast Club. At the end, I reminded myself about all your other entities. And then my brain said, yeah, how is he going to run all these different things? And that's a lot of trust to put in people, because I know that's one of my biggest problems, trust to see, people. Look, and, that, and, that, when, and when I say, you know, things we've been exposed to, or things that we don't believe, I had a young lady hit me up one day when we were talking about expanding and she said please don't right out of fear right and i asked her why i inboxed her asked her why and she gave me a great answer and i kind of felt what she was saying but i quickly reminded her that it's been done before right folks go to starbucks every day not thinking about the fact that it started out as a single store in seattle yeah I and think that we culture, have that, I think we that have culture mindset. had to be developed I got you. and taught and carried out. People go get their chicken nuggets and lemonade every day from that place. Yeah, I feel you. Right? And we love we never And we never think about that. I did but it started thing. out I'm, I'm as a I'm, small I'm just as mom and pop shop. I'm just as guilty as those other people, though. When you started making this bigger, I'm like, why would he do that? The whole beauty of this place to me was that it was yeah. small and intimate. So I'm just as guilty as everybody else, yeah. to be honest with you. And then you made it big, and I'm like, and they still have to go in there. Yeah. Now, don't <laughs> get me wrong. I'm mindful. You know, I wouldn't go and build a, a 5,000 square foot space right. because it would take away from the intimacy the that intimacy. they get when they come here. I get yeah. it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But it doesn't mean that we won't duplicate the concept. Put it somewhere else. Right. I got you. Uh, Marcus, I appreciate your time. You're a busy man. You are, you really are. You got so much going on. Then you got your political stands and all the other stuff you like to get into Man. as well. You're always a part of the community, which is something I love about you. You're always yeah. outspoken. You're not afraid to bite your tongue, which most most people are. <laughs> you say whatever it is, and if they hate you yeah. for it, you, your attitude is kind of like, yeah. And you're going to do your yeah. thing. But and, I admire that. As long as, I, I, as long as I'm standing up for truth and for justice, you know, and I, you know if, I'm, if I'm out here shouting about some, some BS, that's different. But I, I um, you know, I, my, my two heroes, you know, they stood on truth and they were vocal about it and, yeah. and, and willing to take the consequence. The consequence for them was death. Mm. So surely, little old me, I'll speak up. Talk about Mark and the mouth. Absolutely. I knew he was out. I think they did too. Where, where, 
give people the location of your spot. Well, it's actually Marcus Martin Mount. Yeah. Garvey, that is. <laughs> King, that is. I think <laughs> X, that is. I think they got you, but just in case they yeah. didn't, yeah. they got it and you can do your research. But give them the location, just in case they don't know. Oh, we located 3711 Travis, corner of Travis in Alabama, right in Midtown, uh, 4814 Now Meeting, Reggae Hut, right there in Third Ward, and uh, the Alley Cat, 3718 Main Street, downtown Houston, Culture, 701 Avenida at Ross. Oh, and, oh social media. Board, yeah. You can find me on social media at Marcus Mosiah. That's M A R C U S M O S I A H. And then um, at Catfish and Grips for the breakfast club. Bam. Catfish with a cake. Watch this, y'all. Where's your favorite place to eat in the city? My mama house. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all can't go to his mama house, but we do have the breakfast club. So we'll yeah. see you there, y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. <laughs>